In this video, you will discover a holistic and natural approach to improve mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerance by combining diet, lifestyle change, and targeted nutritional supplements that address the root cause. You can take control of your symptoms and make meaningful and lasting improvements. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Kahn, board certified chiropractic neurologist and certified in functional medicine. Let me show you how to master your health. So now that you know the root causes of MCAS or mast cell activation, you understand that there are multiple root causes. It's multifactorial. Therefore, the solution must also be multiple faceted, addressing each of these components or root causes of mast cell activation syndrome. Now let's start talking about solutions. Now, one of the solutions is simply making changes to your diet. Okay, now, of course, we're dealing with mass cell degranulation and its associated high histamine levels in your body. Now, histamine is naturally produced in your body and it serves very important biological function. So histamine is not the bad guy. The problem is that your mast cells are overproducing them. Now, there are foods that contain histamine. So we might do well to reduce the histamine intake from the diet to temporarily help you to lower the histamine level because you're producing too much. So if we don't eat as much from the diet, then your overall histamine level will be lower, then you'll be less symptomatic while we're attacking the root causes. Now keep in mind that when it comes to adopting a lower histamine diet, the key word here is to decrease the amount of intake, not to completely eliminate. It is not practical, nor is it necessary to completely eliminate every histamine from your food because histamine are found in varying amounts in a whole variety of different foods. So therefore it's impossible to cut out all histamine there and also it's not necessary to do that. So some people, clients that I work with, they kind of get obsessed about histamine. They say, oh my gosh, everything has histamine in it. How do I even do that? You don't have to worry about every single morsel of histamine. You just need to reduce the histamine intake from what you're currently doing in the, enough to make a difference. How much is enough? You have to play with it, okay? So that's the key takeaway here. Now, there are certain foods that have more histamine than other foods. So I'm gonna give you a list here. And what you wanna do is the top five to 10 foods that have the highest histamine level maybe you want to more aggressively reduce or even eliminate. And then the rest of the histamine containing food, don't worry so much about them, just try to be aware and try to eat less of it. So the top five histamine containing foods will be fermented alcoholic beverages like beer and wine and so forth. And then we have aged cheese, especially blue cheese. Then we have fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi and so forth. Now, a lot of times people say, well, I thought fermented food is good for me. It is good for you, unless you have mast cell activation and you have too much histamine and that's causing you symptoms. So fermented foods like sauerkraut and kimchi and kombucha, maybe uh, you want to reduce or eliminate. And then cured, smoked, or processed meats. Okay, these are salami, bacons, and pepperoni. These are also contain high histamine. And then dried or fermented fish products like canned tuna, uh, these uh, anchovies and sardines that are you know, canned or processed, they can have higher amount of histamine. So those are your top five. So perhaps look at those top five foods if you're currently consuming them and aim to either eliminate or severely reduce, right? Because they have the most histamine and if you reduce them or eliminate them, you're gonna get the most difference from reducing histamine in your diet. Now the next five will be vinegar-based food like pickles, mayonnaise, and olives. These pickle products can also contain high histamine. And then soy sauce and other fermented soy product can also contain histamine. We have sour foods like sour cream and buttermilk. And then we have dry fruits like dry apricot, prunes, dates, and raisins. And then we have tomatoes. So that rounds out your top 10. Again, aim to severely reduce or completely eliminate the top five, maybe moderately reduce the top, the next five. And then the rest of the list are things like eggplants, spinach, avocado, citrus fruit like oranges, lemon, and limes, strawberries, pineapples, chocolate, walnuts and peanuts, mushrooms, and legumes such as chickpeas and beans. Now, the rest of that list that I just gave you 
they do contain histamine, but just not as high as the top 5 or 10. So aim to eat less of them. You don't have to completely eliminate. Again, how much to eliminate? Everybody's going to be different. Depends on how much histamine you have, then it's going to dictate how much you need to cut out. So just gradually eliminate them, and then eliminate to a point where you feel some difference. Now, let's talk about natural solutions to address each of these individual root causes of mast cell activation using nutritional supplements. The root causes of mast cell activation, which is multiple factors, multifactorial. So therefore, the way that you manage mast cell activation is not what's the one magic supplement that'll fix it all, right? It's a holistic approach, addressing the different root causes. So for mucosal inflammation, gut inflammation, you might want to start by healing leaky gut. Then you might heal leaky gut by removing foods that are processed, that maybe that you're sensitive to. A common culprit is gluten and dairy, but not everybody's sensitive to the same thing, so you need to identify it for yourself. But in general, eating real food, whole food, unprocessed food, that's not sugar-laden and chemically-laden, is a good start. But then nutritional supplement-wise, want to use things that has mucilaginous property that can coat the gut, things such as aloe vera, okra extract, things like deglycerized licorice root extract, L-glutamine is very helpful to help to provide energy source for the enterocytes so they can heal themselves. So gut inflammation can be addressed through nutritional supplement and dietary changes. Mass cell degran degranulation, so there are substances that can help to stabilize the mast cell so they're not so eager to release their mediator. So this includes things like your quercetin. It's a bioflavonoid compound that can be found in fruits and vegetables, but also can be taken in a supplement form that has a mast cell stabilizing effect. Okay, vitamin C also helps in this regard to help with that. And then on the histamine side, we have things that are kind of a natural antihistamine. Quercetin fits that role as well. The next thing we have is nettles or stinging nettles. Nettle is a herb compound that can uh, block the H2 receptor, okay, and thereby become an antihistamine. Okay, so it's an antihistamine of the H2 receptor. Now, be careful if you have stomach acid problems because uh, it can block stomach acid production. If you already have trouble with not producing enough stomach acid to digest food, using too much nettle can further decrease stomach acid production. But outside of that, nettles can have an antihistaminic effect. So can quercetin, so can vitamin C. Those three things are complementary. Now, earlier we talked about mast cell being a T helper 2 type of immune response. So then we have this Th2 dominant situation. So what can we do with that? Well, there are su supplements or nutritional compounds that can help to dampen, to dampen the T helper 2 immune response. So those things will be, again, quercetin is a great kind of all-around multi-purpose multi support. Perella extract from perella seed is also a great candidate that can help to modulate or dampen T helper 2 immune response. Astragalus is an herb that both dampens T helper 2 but also supports T helper 1, so it kind of balances your immune system. So those would be great things to use to help with this Th2 dominant situation. Of course, we want to address the underlying issue of over overexposure to these environmental toxins by looking for you know, any kind of mold overgrowth in your house and remediate those, using air filters if you need to, using organic as much as possible, switching to a natural product. Those are all lifestyle things you want to do. But on the supplement front, you can use these particular nutritional compounds to dampen Th2 or immune response. On the other hand, we want to support the T helper 1 immune response because when Th2 is being overactive, the T helper 1 immune response, the part of the immune system that help you to kill bugs, is not working strong enough. And this often causes people to have chronic infections. So what are some of the things we can use here? Well, we can use things like berberine. Now, berberine is an herb that really help with blood sugar stability as well, but it has really great T helper one supportive immune properties. And then we have Chinese skull cap. Chinese skull cap is a herb that's very commonly used in Chinese medicine. 
It's a great T helper one immune support as well. And then things like broccoli seed extract or the chemical name is sulforaphane that also can support T helper one. And then glutathione, which is an antioxidant your body naturally produces, but you only make so much in a day. So you can run out of them if your body's really inflamed or dealing with a lot of chemicals. Then glutathione can be very helpful as well as N-acetylcysteine, which is a, uh, a precursor that your body can use to make glutathione from. Both of these can be very helpful to support the T helper one immune response. So we have this target, we have mast cell and histamine as a target. Now further downstream for histamine, histamine is produced in the body but it's broken down in the body. So naturally there's a turnover. However, some people have trouble breaking down histamine due to genetic reasons or otherwise. The breakdown of histamine involves two different enzymes, and these enzymes all require the use of methylated vitamins. So you have methylfolate, methyl B12, s methionine, or SAM-E with a little e, are all methyl donors that can help with the enzymes that help you to break down histamine. Some people may even benefit from diamine oxidase enzymes, you can take the enzyme that break down histamine directly in a supplement form that can help you to break down histamine. Now, for people who have vagus nerve problems, you may want to stimulate the vagus nerve. You can do that through very non-invasive exercises like gargling, humming, and gagging exercises. I made a video talking about vagus nerve, so you can look it up, uh, that vagus nerve video. But the vagus nerve requires acetylcholine as a neurosubstrate. And some people may have acetylcholine deficiency. So you can get more acetylcholine into your system or more precursors by ingesting choline. And choline is a fatty substance that you can get from egg yolk or other fatty foods. But you can also take it as a supplement. So choline is a choice here because the acetylcholine is comprised of choline. You can also use alpha-GPC and huperzine. So these are classic nutritional supplements that have an effect on supporting the acetylcholine pathway, and that will in turn support the vagus nerve. You can do exercise for the vagus nerve, which will dampen inflammation here. And to dampen inflammation specifically here, to help with this tumor necrosis factor alpha release, things like turmeric and resveratrol can be very helpful. So here are all the different things that you can do from a nutritional supplement perspective, but as well as lifestyle, right? Working on gut inflammation and leaky gut by making dietary changes. You may need to take antimicrobial herbs or even medication if you have some kind of infection. Environmental toxins, you can work to switch to natural products. Insulin resistance, you can work on balancing your blood sugar by eating a lower glycemic index food and increase Physical activity with chronic inflammation, you need to identify the source of that inflammation, but turmeric and resveratrol becomes a top choice there again. Cortisol and stress. Stress management is really important. It's all about perception, right? What do you perceive as stress? Now, obviously, practices such as deep breathing and meditation and mindfulness can help. And then decrease glutathione. We talked about glutathione supplement as a way to replenish and add to your body supply that you may run deficient in. So these are all the strategies that you can employ to make a meaningful difference in mast cell activation and therefore help your body to heal itself. Now that you know the diet, supplements, and lifestyle changes that you can make to improve your mast cell activation syndrome and histamine intolerances holistically. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Thank you for watching, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.